And if I told you once, I ain't gonna tell you twice. Salute all my real ones. Yeah, listen champ. We got faster than light speed travel with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, Warp, Star Trek, get hot. The cush they sell around the corner will get you lit. And you'll warp into a different dimension, I promise you. Around the corner, I don't know what corner, not this corner. Oh wait, it's legal in New York. Around the corner. Uh, let me start talking, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Before we get into the video, like button, subscribe button, notification bell, press those, let's go! Uh. Science fiction writers have given us many examples of spaceships traveling through space at the speed of light or even faster. The reality, however, is a bit different. So, is traveling at the speed of light and beyond even theoretically possible? In Star Trek, they got around this problem because they had warp drives. So if this is like the galaxy and they're on one side and they want to get to the other side. And so they turn on their warp engines and they would bend the fabric of space because the diameter of the galaxy is 100,000 light years. If you traveled as fast as light, it would take you 100,000 years to cross the galaxy. So what they did was they bend space and then take a little bridge across the, and then they unbend it back. And that's how they get across the galaxy during the TV commercial. We don't have anything like that. The fastest hunk of hardware we have ever launched, it's going like four times escape velocity from Earth. It's a tiny spacecraft on the largest engines in our arsenal. You combine those two facts, laws of physics say this thing is gonna be hauling. If you hitched a ride on that, you would reach the nearest stars in about 35,000 years. If we look at the Einstein special relativity theory. I don't know, man, because a few days ago I got real late. You know what I'm saying? Mama Juana. Y'all don't know about Mama Juana. You know what I'm saying? Y'all ever been to DR? You know what I'm saying? Get yourself some. I got some in the glass right now. Mm. Ah. I'm saying, I, I'm not going to pull the bottle, but I got the bottle right there. Get yourself the right kind of buzz. You go to anywhere in the galaxy in about 3.2 seconds. That's all I'm saying. Theory, the speed of light in vacuum has constant velocity of 186,282 miles per second. If you could travel at this speed, you could go around the Earth seven and a half times in one second. If you travel fast enough, you can actually leap forwards in time. Relativity specifies that you travel a good fraction of the speed of light, time will tick more slowly for you than all your loved ones back on Earth. If your journey is too long, you might be gone for 10 years and everyone else on Earth ages 100. So you've effectively gone into the future and then everyone you knew when you left Earth is now dead. Since light travels at finite speeds, when we observe... Well, that sucks. Why would I want to breeze and then everybody I care about is dead? Like, taking everybody I care about on the ship with me. All 17 of them. Of distant objects, we are literally looking into the past. Most of the stars that are visible to the naked eye in the night sky are 10 to 100 light years away. Thus, we see them as they were 10 to 100 years ago. We observe Andromeda, the nearest major spiral two galaxy to our own Milky Way galaxy, as it was about two and a half million years ago. So, if we could travel at the speed of light, it would take us around 2.5 million years to reach Andromeda. The nearest star, Alpha Centauri, is 4.37 light years away. Even NASA's Voyager 1 space probe, traveling at 10 miles per second, which became the first spacecraft to enter interstellar space back in 2012, would take around 70,000 years to get there. The distance between stars is vast. We would need to understand something new about the fabric of the space-time continuum and exploit that in order to expect to travel to the stars. I don't know, just hearing Neil deGrasse see it like that is kind of depressing. It's like, 
one of the I know for me that randomly I get hit with this is it a feeling uh, I get hit with the question in my mind of like what's the purpose of it all right what's the purpose of life but then what's the purpose of the universe right and you know sometimes you have to accept the possibility that humans are not the purpose though like life it might be a byproduct of the universe but it's not the purpose of the universe um and, and sometimes I think about that, but then I'm like, man, but if we're here and we're an extension of the universe, one, does that mean that the universe is alive, right? Because we're made of, we're made up of the building blocks that make up the universe and we're an extension of it and we exist within it. But more importantly, um, like if there are laws and if there is a creator or whatever created it, you know, why make it so difficult that life cannot get to other places in the universe or, or other places within the galaxy, right? Like, traveling to Mars apparently is difficult as, as hell to the point where they're like, all right, cool, we're going to try to recruit as many people as we can that want to actually try to go to Mars. Oh, by the way, it's a one-way trip. Right, like that's how difficult it is that they're like, yo, we can send you there, gain you back, bro. Nah, you, you know what I'm saying? You on your total recall, Arnold Schwarzenegger die over there type shit. Um, but yeah, so that's just it. Like sometimes I think about the vastness of it, and it's like, man, like it would really suck if there's not a actual way to be able to traverse these distances and visit all these different places within the lifespan of a human. So, of course, in real life, if we want to be able to, you know, live the life of science fiction and travel to other stars, how might we actually do it? Old school science fiction is you have a rocket ship. Could you build a rocket ship and use it to travel to another star? So the short answer is not really. The way the space shuttle worked is it has, it's full of fuel and you light that fuel and you get a massive explosion. You direct the explosion out the back and the gas flows out. Oh, he's about to say, but then the more speed you need, the more, the more fuel you're going to need, which is going to make the ship more massive, which means that the more mass it has, the more fuel you need, and it becomes a thing where you need infinite, infinite mass or whatever the hell. That way, and you get a reaction. If you push the gas up that way, you go that way. Okay, so it's very simple, brute force technology, and it pushes the space shuttle up into space. And that you needed all this incredible fuel just to get 300 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So you still haven't even escaped from the Earth's gravity, let alone escape the sun, let alone travel to another star. So even if you could build a rocket that had everything you needed on it to travel to another star, and you built the fastest rocket that's ever been built, it would take about 20,000 years to get even to the nearest star. If travel to distant stars within an individual's lifetime is going to be possible, a means of faster-than-light propulsion will have to be found. In 1994, Miguel Alcubierre proposed a method that would take us beyond the speed of light limit. In his mathematical theory, he used two points in space-time to demonstrate the expansion and contraction of space fabric. The idea of Alcubierre's theory is that we could use this space-time warp to make an object travel faster than light. This theory is also known as Alcubierre Drive, shifts space around an object so that the object would arrive at its destination more quickly than light would in normal space without breaking any physical laws. Instead of going faster than light, the spaceship would remain stationary at a time in which the space in front of it is moving faster than light. The ship would effectively ride the supersonic wave to get to its destination without exceeding the speed of light. It was postulated that this warp drive would require a negative energy or exotic matter, thus making it practically impossible to achieve under the current laws of energy and thermodynamics. Yes, I mean, let's just come up with ships that need magical matter that doesn't exist to be able to get the job done. Then what's the point, bro? What's the point?
Yo, we need like 58 million pounds of antimatter. Okay, where are you gonna get that? In a universe made of matter. I'm on Lotto, bro. This my my one that's hitting, bro. This is The other problem with this theory that burn the hairs on your chest is that the space-time warp would damage any planets or stars it passed near. The energy released by the warp drive could be strong enough to rip nearby planets apart or even trigger the formation of a black hole at its destination. In March of 2021, Dr. Eric Lentz, a research Oh, well, that's not a problem. At Germany's University of Gothenburg, published a paper where he showed the existing research and claims to have discovered gaps in previous warp drive studies. Lentz noticed that there existed yet to be explored configurations of space time curvature organized into so called solitons that have the potential to solve the puzzle while being physically viable. He believes to have found a way to permit superfast travel by creating a series of solitons that can provide the basis for a powerful propulsion system. These solitons, in theory, could maintain their shape and move at constant velocity, using sources with only positive energies that can enable travel at any speed. Several other attempts and hypotheses have been proposed in the past to explain the long-standing problem of faster-than-light travel. Einstein's theory of special relativity states that energy and mass are interchangeable, and speed of light travel is impossible for material objects that, unlike photons, have non-zero rest mass. In 1935, Einstein and his colleague Nathan Rosen proposed a hypothetical wormhole theory Einstein in which Rosen two separate bridge. points in space-time are bridged together. In essence, this would form a tunnel or shortcut through space-time. Einstein's theory of general relativity mathematically predicts the existence of wormholes, but none have been discovered to date. Even if a wormhole could form, it would most likely be very unstable. Wormholes are still speculative, and nobody really knows if you could pass through it. The math said, Uh, they passed through it in interstellar, bro. And in deep space nine. And those are biographies, like... Just that you need some sort of exotic material to pry the throat of the wormhole opening so that it won't collapse on itself. Even then... Pause. It is possibly unstable. For a simplified notion of a wormhole, imagine taking a strip of paper and folding it over. You have created a tube-like shape. Now imagine this tube allows for two points in space that are far apart to connect together in some way. This is how a wormhole could theoretically work. In a new theory, physicist at the University of Oldham my question is, if, if you're bending space and let's say that there's a planet at the bend can, and there's life on that planet, can the people on that planet see or feel or be affected by the fact that the universe is bent where their planet is? ...have shown that microscopic, traversable wormholes could exist without having to rely on exotic matter or a new theory of gravity. Their model permits the existence of a wormhole traversable by matter, provided that the ratio between the electric charge and the mass of the wormhole exceeds a certain limit. However, this type of wormhole, as postulated by the researchers, would probably not be suitable for interstellar travel. There are many bizarre theories that have become reality over the years of scientific research. However, faster-than-light travel, although an interesting and creative idea for science fiction, for the near future, remains just a dream. Thanks for watching. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Um, well, that sucks. Hopefully, you know what I'm saying, we can figure this out soon. Because by the time I'm like 89, 
You know, I want to be able to travel to a different part of the galaxy. Why not? You know what I'm saying? Set up shop over there. You know what I'm saying? Do reaction videos from Wolf 359 or whatever planet is nearby. Anyway, let me know what y'all thought of the video. Let's leave a comment in the comment section. My name is Rain. Catch you on the flip side. RCP salute. Wait for it.